Friends, we're looking at Jeremiah 32, and we're looking at the idea of God's promises to actually bring his people back uh, from the captivity in Babylon, from exile. And how would, you, how would you prove to anyone that you believed that that was, in fact, true, that God's word was true? Well, you'd have to live in accord with it, how you live, the decisions you make, the actions that you take are an indication of whether you believe what God has said. So we have a real special case of this here in terms of Jeremiah buying a field in this area of the promised land when it looks like that's not a very wise things, thing to do because the Babylonians are taking over the land. Let's Let's take a look. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, chapter 32, at that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem and Jeremiah the prophet, well, he was sort of under arrest there. Uh, he was shut up in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah. So he doesn't even have his own freedom. And Zedekiah, the king of Judah, had imprisoned him there and here was the reason. He said, why do you prophesy and say, thus says the Lord, behold, I'm giving this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall capture it. Um, and, the king, and the king of Judah shall not escape. This is not a popular message with the king of Judah. So he imprisoned him. And, and then what happened was that Jeremiah's cousin came to him. Now the Lord had indicated to Jeremiah that his cousin would come to him and then it happened and the cousin was saying by my field that is at Anathoth which is where Jeremiah was from uh, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours so that went to the the nearest relative and that would have been Jeremiah so the cousin in fact came to him and said this and that and that way you know he knew this was the Lord because the Lord had in, informed him about this and so what did he do he he bought the field, uh, and he there was an exchange of money. There was a signing of a deed, and that deed was sealed, and there was witnesses, and they weighed out the money, you know, so this is a public transaction. So it's a testimony about something. So there's witnesses to this signed deed of purchase. We're getting to see firsthand that Jeremiah would actually put his money where his mouth was that God had made promises that he'd bring his people back into the land. If those promises are not true, then this money has not been well spent because the land, the deed, and everything, that's worthless because the Babylonians are going to take over and that's it. But if God's word is true, then yes, he can buy that land as a statement of faith, right? And, and so here, Jer Jeremiah, he prays for understanding. He, he says, I pray to the Lord, ah, Lord God, nothing is too hard for you. You have shown signs and wonders in the land of Egypt, right? And to this day in Israel and among all mankind and have made a name for yourself as at this day. Because you brought your people out of the land of uh, Egypt with signs and wonders and you gave them the land which you swore to their fathers to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they entered and they took possession of it. But they did not obey your voice or walk in your law. They did nothing of all you commanded them to do. So the failure is not God's, it's theirs. This is what Jeremiah is praying about. Therefore, you have made all this disaster come upon them. Yet you, O Lord God, have said to me, buy the field for money and get witnesses, though the city is given into the hands of the Chaldeans. Right? And so then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? So we need to remember that. God can bring about his promises. Is there anything too hard for God? No, of course not. So the Chaldeans, well, the Babylonians, yeah, they shall come and set this city on fire and burn it. True. Uh, but the children of Israel and the children of Judah... You know, they, they've done nothing but evil in my sight from their youth. They've not listened to receive instruction from me. But 
God will still be true to his promises. I will gather them from all the countries to which I drove them in my anger, and I'll bring them back to this place, and I will make them dwell in safety, right? And that's why it makes sense to buy the field. So yes, Jeremiah, go ahead and do it. See, you and I, we have to act on the promises of God. That's how we prove that we really believe. Is Jesus coming again to judge the living and the dead? Uh, is it true that we should set our hearts on things that are above, that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Yes, it's true. And so we should act that way. Father, teach us how to live in accord with your holy word. We know your word is true. Thank you for your son. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.